take me back to um, your roots with Bernie Man. Well, I, I first went, um, I've, got, I've gone five years straight now, so uh, first time was 2009, mm-hmm. um, and I, the, the main reason I went really was to play at Opulent Temple, yep. um, and I played for those guys for, I reckon for eight or nine years prior to that in you know various parties in San Francisco, and I'd, I'd always really enjoyed it always done pretty well and um they're obviously very heavily involved with um with opulent temple um and uh yeah and they you know they they just asked if it was going to be a possibility one year and you know i kind of saved my pennies up and got myself out there and did a um i was given a, a, a two and a half hour set back to back with me katie yeah um, on burn burn night and um it just completely changed my life to be honest i mean i, I you know I, I actually that year picked up three or four other sets as well so i also played for um for well for the camp that, that's become district and it was there in between year in between being the deep end and being district yeah um and actually ended up staying with some friends of theirs in an rv um it was all a bit random to be honest but um got to know them over the subsequent year really well so when they came back as, as districts I ended up rooming with um, you know an RV with two or three of the governors um, who since you know since then have just become really close um, personal friends so uh, yeah it was uh, that was my first year and um, I haven't really looked back to be honest <laughs> awesome um, I've probably caught four or five sets of yours this last burn wow it, yeah it was fun and I, I was amazed of the of the um variety of music that you've been playing yeah well you know do you know what it's, it's like it's like i said i mean for me there's um you know i think i think one of the skills of being a dj um is is that kind of empathy that you feel for what people want at a given time and obviously the more the more you go to um to special events or the more you play at, at specific clubs the more you get to understand that market those people um, you know what people want, and it's exactly the same with the player. Um, you know, you you kind of you get used to uh, what it feels like to be playing at a certain time of day. Um, you know, sunrise demands something completely different from a you know from one of those massive kind of nighttime sets with fire going off everywhere, and you know everyone's a little bit ADHD. But <laughs> you know, you, you find yourself tipping up at six a.m. and the whole thing's got such a different feel to it. So, you know, each year I kind of go away and I take a little bit more of that away with me and I just kind of, I just bring that experience back to the prior each year and, you know, I think you can kind of hear it in the sets, just the way they, you know, the the range has expanded each year and for me me as a musician and and as a DJ as well, it's just been really inspiring knowing that nothing's off limits anymore musically, you know, how a lot of the time I think DJs and producers get quite stereotyped and they get, they get kind of shoehorned into into neat little boxes and categories and all the rest of it. And I've never really liked that at all. You know, and even even though I guess historically I was known as a probably as a breakbeat DJ more right. than anything. I, I was like the breakbeat DJ that didn't really play breaks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's always been it's always been that way for me. I, I kinda like I like treading I like treading around the edges of, of you know, where genres meet and those kind of interesting hybrids that come out. And you know, and I think I think now I've you know I've got enough experience as a DJ to be able to really play on that, particularly in the longer sets, you know. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a real inspiration for me just being able to um, to go and source music of all tempos, of all genres and styles, and know that each year I've got places and times that are ideal to play them. That's awesome. Speaking of speaking of the longer sets, um, you were quoted in a recent uh, DJ took uh, uh, DJ Tech Tools article uh-huh. regarding playing long sets. Yeah, um, and, and you know for the one series, which you play six hours or so, and then on Burning Man you play so many hours. Um, yeah, maybe a bit of um, your perspective and experience about playing long sets, and especially on the playa. Uh, I, I mean, I absolutely love it. It's it, it, you know the one series is. It, the, the, the concept of it for anyone who doesn't know is is basically one DJ one room all night or one dance floor all night um, 
and and a lot of that really has evolved out of the sunrise sets that that I do at Burning Man, which are, you know, unlike most other DJ sets you get to do, they're completely open ended, time wise, and I think that you know that creates that just creates a really interesting um, dynamic. You know, the music can meander a lot more. You can allow tracks more more room to breathe. Right. And it just occurred to me doing these each year, which I've done with the Nuts Camp each year. And right. I've done Robot at Heart a couple of times, and um, you know the sort of just the big like sunrisey kind of vibes is that the music can um, you know you don't have to have you don't really need the big peaks and troughs. You just need to you need to really work with people to feel um, to feel their kind of energy levels at a given time. Um, so you know a, a, I, I've just found doing those really inspiring. It's it's shown me that it's a very different way of DJing. It's it's almost going back to my roots as well as a DJ, going back to the real early 90s when I first started playing. And, you know, I would play for five hours. That was quite normal. And, right. you know, play, play entirely off vinyl and play incredibly eclectic music, you know, from, I don't know, the Stone Roses to um, Acid House to Belgian New Beat to, you know, some more down-tempo stuff. And, it, it you know, that's that, those, are, those are my roots. And I guess that's why... I've always felt of myself as quite eclectic, but the one, you know, the one series actually taking it out of the plier and finding other opportunities to do those longer, more expressive sets was, um, you know, was it's all kind of evolved from from those sunrise experiments, and now I'm in a I'm in a really nice position where I get to do a good few of them a year in in cities, you know, in actual like fixed locations and with a fixed time span, but you still you know, if you're playing for six or seven hours, you've got pretty much as much scope as you need to, you know, to explore a, a, a very broad range of music. So yeah, I absolutely love doing them. That's awesome. It must be also a um, a, a difficult physical experience, and and you know, you do what eight or ten sets uh, um, of the week of Burning Man. Yeah, I mean, the, the most I, I did one year, I did thirteen, and it, it was it was ridiculous. You know, I, I remember I, there was one day where I ended up I played for I played five sets, and I played for a total of thirteen hours, I think, in a twenty four hour period. <laughs> and um, you know, and I, I kind of came away from that day just thinking enough's enough because it's it's kind of it's inevitable that you know the best sets that you do are the ones that you're really geared up for that you've got a bit of time to. Um, to understand the vibe of the crowd, to really get your head around what people want, what you want to be playing, um, and if you, you know, if you overstack things too much, uh, it's inevitable that you just, you know, you end up. Some of the sets just aren't for you. you you're not in the right headspace. You get there, and you, and you would also, you just, you just get physically exhausted. So they, you know, they. I just found that that there were there were way too many that year. So. You know, I've cr tried to kind of chop it back, but it's, you know what it's like, it's inevitable that if, I mean, I, you know, I play all over the States and all over Canada now, and I have, you know, sound camps who come from all over the US who, who turn up at Burning Man, I might, I might play for them, you know, once or twice a year in their hometown, and, and it, you know, if, if, if those people offer you a set, it's very, very hard to turn around and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to give it a miss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and, and so, th thank you for coming to play uh, House of Dust in Toronto, <laughs> oh, July 26. It's our second uh, anniversary. Oh, I can't wait. Really, mm -hmm. I mean, it um, sounds like you guys have been doing some great things out there. The, the parties have been wicked, so I hear. They've been wicked, and we kept them uh, intimate and uh, small enough so that there's there's a good communication uh, between everyone. Um, Perfect. So so they're nice, and and that's another thing, Simon, that I've noticed that you're very approachable. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, you're very I, I approachable uh, during the sets, before, after, whatever it is. Online. Well, I, you know, I mean, do you, I, I don't really see, I don't really see what I do as anything other than, you know, I, I see myself first and foremost as a as a party goer, along with everybody else, and 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 everybody has their role to play in those parties. You know, you, you kind of. I mean, I had, I had a really interesting experience at the Burn this year. A friend of mine was doing, um, he was doing a set on on the Saturday night and everyone was a bit burnt out it was we, we got to the camp to show him a bit of love just four of us <laughs> and there was nobody there you know like literally he was playing on his own with a bottle of whiskey looking like the saddest little puppy in the world <laughs> and um and we just you know we just started dancing and we literally brought a dance floor in 
just by dancing, just getting out there, just kind of, just just creating a, a great vibe. And you can, you know, the, that's my point being is that everybody on the dance floor has a role to play, just as the DJ has a role to play. And I kind of, you know, I've never seen it as a, a you know, as a kind of egotistical thing at all, DJing. I just see it as, you know, may, maybe I'm I'm one of the best placed people in the room to create the music and to tell the story and stuff. But right. It doesn't make me any more or less valuable than every other person that's there, and it's, I think it's a really, it's a really um, sound way of looking at things. You, you know, you never really get ahead of yourself if you think in those terms. And I'm also, you know, when I play, I really try to read the room. I really try to see what people are feeling and what they're not, and trying to, you know, get a nice balance there so that everyone goes home with a big smile on their faces. It's time for the 